welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company. The National Weather Service. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Harry Keeling. On the behalf of the Alaska Public Media and the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation, welcome to Hangar Flying. Our guest this evening is a true pioneer in the unmanned aircraft world. He was professor of aviation law at University of North Dakota uh, for 12 years, and he developed the first UAS program there beginning in 2007, which was, in fact, one of the first in the nation. Um, Doug Marshall is here in Anchorage as part of the 7th Annual Alaska Unmanned Interest Group Conference. Doug, welcome to Hangar Flying. Thank you, Harry. Thanks for inviting me. <clears throat> D Doug, i got to tell you, it's a real honor to have you on this program. I've known you for many years since I've been associated with unmanned aircraft, and, and uh, I've always appreciated uh, uh, what you bring to the program. And, and, and I, I would say that... I believe you're probably the foremost lawyer, uh, legal expert in the unmanned aircraft field. So maybe an exaggeration, but thank <laughs> you. Um, you're also a commercial pilot, and <clears throat> in fact, you told me you were president of a commuter. Airline. I was indeed, yeah, for a couple of years. Very interesting time of my life, to say the least. So, commercial <clears throat> pilot, lawyer, UAS advocate. Why so much enthusiasm for drones? It's, uh, it's an exciting technology. It's uh, the most exciting thing that's come along in aviation in decades. Uh, we got involved in it kind of by accident at, uh, at North Dakota, but as it evolved, uh, it just became such a huge challenge and, uh, and a rapidly evolving and expanding area of, uh, of interest for all of us that uh, I just couldn't, couldn't give up on it. I was having too much fun. So <clears throat> we've talked about unmanned aircraft on this program uh, uh, at times. But give us your vision of what is it really going to bring? What's it, what's it going to bring to the, to the country, to the state of Alaska? Uh, what's the technology going to give us? Well, the technology is going to fill in a lot of gaps that uh, are left in, in manned aviation, or safety gaps, or uh, providing uh, supplements to uh, other activities that can be carried out by traditional manned aviation uh, that are safer. Uh, there's uh, Arctic research that's going on here, uh, agricultural uh, support, uh, just a thousand different uh, applications for UASs that would uh, augment or supplement what's been going on for decades in, in the manned aviation world. And you can get these, these small rotorcraft or quadcopters or winged aircraft into places that you can't get a manned aircraft. And they can, uh, for example, flying into a volcano plume and uh, uh, taking samples of the air. Uh, I, I have a personal story from that. I was stranded in Amsterdam four years ago for the, the Iceland volcano, and that's not a bad place to be stranded, but uh, one of the challenges of, of trying to deal with that airspace shutdown was not knowing what the ash content was of the cloud, and I think an unmanned aircraft could have performed that, that function, whereas uh, the, the researchers and the airspace managers weren't willing to put a manned aircraft up, so that's one of many, many examples. You know, Doug, it's interesting you bring up that example because in the Office of Aviation Services, of course, where I work, um, we actually certify some of the uh, 135 operators in town, mm -hmm. and we go to great lengths to talk about the dangers of flying around active volcanoes. Right. And of course, in the example that you give, you could fly right down into the caldera, and if you lose the the vehicle, so what? Yeah, if you lose it, you lose it, but you're getting data, useful data, uh, in the whole process. I just read on the news this afternoon that uh, is that NOAA or NASA is flying a small UA into the on eye of a hurricane? It'll be the, maybe a one-way trip for that aircraft. That's not something that uh, others would be willing to do. I think one of your other guests has flown 
P3s into that same environment, and that's, that's dangerous work. But uh, doing it with a UAV, you don't put anybody's life in danger. You might lose the airplane, but that's an expected uh, risk of that kind of an operation. Absolutely. And up <clears> here, <throat> well, one of, the, one of the sayings that you, you, I've heard for years in the UAV world is dull, dirty, or dangerous. Right. And flying off the north sh coast of Alaska is certainly dangerous. It is. And uh, years ago, we, we implemented a requirement that it be twin-engine aircraft only, but we've also lost a twin-engine aircraft and using UAVs. I understand there's a commercial operation up there now. There is actually a couple of them uh, supporting the oil industry and using two different types of systems, uh, one a little bit longer endurance than the other, but they have tremendous cap capability to go out and, and fly into areas that uh, someone in a manned aircraft is not going to fly, not at the low altitudes that, the, that these folks are doing. So. Right. Doug, we've got about a minute left. Would you just give me a quick rundown on how, because I want to get you back uh, on the next program, but g give me a quick rundown on how these uh, drones might be used for agriculture. Well, they can be used for monitoring crops. In fact, they're, they're being used for that purpose uh, legally in other parts of the world and sometimes not so legally here, but farmers are using them for just taking measurements for uh, moisture content, for the need for pesticides, for spraying, um, it can be a, an augment or a supplement to uh, man, you know, crop sprayers. Uh, I think about 80% uh, of the potential market out there right now for our small end systems is for agriculture. Uh, tremendous capabilities of, of these systems. And again, it's cheaper uh, than yeah. other <laughs> systems that are being used for the same purpose. Doug, thanks for being on the program tonight. Thank you. I'm going to get you back on and talk about a couple more issues. So ladies and gentlemen, I uh, hope you enjoyed tonight's program. We're going to actually have the next couple of programs talking about unmanned aircraft because we have the opportunity to interview some real experts in the field. So un until next time, fly safe. Hey, welcome to Alas Alaska weather here. Thanks for standing by. Anyway, on the satellite imagery, uh, Pretty good storm system. Actually, this one sliding off to the southeast, that's what brought the strong winds and rain to Kodiak Island, the Alaska Peninsula yesterday and overnight to uh, last night. That moving off to the southeast, but still a pretty good gradient uh, across the southeast Bering Sea and the peninsula there. Gust to 40, 45 miles an hour still occurring today. Uh, beginning to drop down a little bit, but still pretty brisk out in this area. Cape Nunam gusts 50 miles an hour. And those winds extending all the way back, but in a much narrower area and lighter, 15 to 30 knots up in toward the Bering Strait, and then even lighter up here along the northwest coast, where there was a lot of cloudiness today with uh, areas of light snow continuing, especially along the Arctic coast and uh, north of the Brooks Range. You can see some sunshine breaking out right through the south central interior especially down to the North Gulf Coast, quite a bit of clearing occur occurring in this area and uh, pretty wrapped up storm system bringing uh, gale and storm force winds here along the coast right out in this area. A very narrow band of storm force winds, uh, possible minimum storms like in the 50 knot range uh, with this center as it pulls up right up close to the coast this evening and then it looks like that's when the strongest winds will occur. Gale warnings out tonight for those areas. And then after midnight and toward tomorrow morning, it'll begin to pull back a little bit. And those winds should come down, uh, but holding on to some gales in some areas into tomorrow. And the rain spreading northward here, uh, nothing too terribly heavy, mostly over the southern areas there with the front now crossing Dixon entrance and pretty good conditions up over the northern panhandle. Uh, back out over the Bering Sea, high pressure, light winds and some clearing here right down over the uh, eastern Aleutians. Actually, it's a pretty sunny morning to midday here over the central Aleutians, but a lot of cirrus spreading northward associated with that storm to the south. Another big front out there to the west will be trying to push uh, eastward, but most of it will be heading off to the northeast with high pressure slowly coming eastward along the, uh, toward the west coast. And so this uh, northwest wind flow we've had for a couple of days here That'll be weakening, but shifting inland, and it will probably, uh, by Wednesday, be coming down across the uh, western Alaska range in a weaker form, but probably could result, for example, a little more turbulence than 
also uh, chance of some scattered isolated snow showers, but that should be ended by Wednesday. And looking at this again, you can see the advancing clouds here with this frontal system and rain just about to uh, occur over the central areas if it hasn't already. And then the uh, one slipping into the west there towards Shimia. On the chart, here's the position of that low. At about midday today or late this morning, west of the Queen Charlotte, so it's going to pull back to the west a little bit, and the tightest gradient will occur this evening along the central and south coast. Gale warnings even over the southern inside waters for tonight, and uh, the central and southern coast, and then lighter winds up to the uh, north here. But again, uh, pretty light winds, just a breeze, and drier conditions in over the interior. A few isolated snow showers occurring along the eastern Alaska range. That'll probably hold through tonight and into tomorrow, but nothing too heavy. Same thing occurring over in this area. We've got one band of moisture right through here with some areas of very light precipitation associated with that, and then another band right out through here. Uh, again, but amounts quite light. A little more extensive area of uh, precipitation, snow, up here over the northwest part of the state, and that's probably going to hold and continue tonight and through most of the day tomorrow, and then Probably by Wednesday, Tuesday night and Wednesday, that'll shift off to the east. And uh, looking like a pretty good day again uh, for Wednesday. Dry just about all areas. We'll watch this uh, front tonight spread the wind and rain into the west central Aleutians. A uh, narrow area of gale force winds ahead of that frontal system. Otherwise high pressure here, again, gradually moving eastward. So these winds are going to uh, diminish. Uh, slowly but uh, noticeably here along the Alaska Peninsula later tonight and uh, stay a little breezy but not that much say 10 to 20 miles an hour here through the Bering Strait and on down toward Nunavak Island but uh, staying breezy here southwest of Kodiak Island. Sitkanak getting a gust of 45 miles an hour today and I'll probably continue through tonight and the winds may pick up say for Kodiak State Airport this evening and could get a little bit of uh, breezy conditions coming through Kamishak Gap, but uh, nothing all that strong. But uh, fair conditions here along the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, and still we have that area of light snow occurring here along the central and western slopes of the Alaska Range and even on to the east. That's going to uh, continue with that east to west flow at the surface there and the upper trough still back to the west and that's what's producing all of this uh, cloudiness and uh, snow condition, but again, amounts are quite light here, nothing too uh, heavy at all. A little more extensive, could see some accumulations up over the northwest areas and uh, to the Arctic coast there. Pretty breezy along the coast, no change really in the winds. East, northeast, uh, 15 to 25 miles an hour. Some areas will see uh, small craft advisories up here along the Arctic coast uh, with heavy freezing spray in the open areas uh, due to the open water conditions up there along the coast. And uh, northerly is again diminishing, but uh, something of a trough here over the Gulf of Alaska, but dry conditions, really not much moisture at all. It's all been taken by this storm system now that's uh, pretty much stationary for the next couple of days. So that first front will roll through, get a break, and then it looks like another one will develop and bring more uh, uh, wind and rain, mostly along the coast tonight. And then for tomorrow, it seems to slip down a little bit, but another front here stationary, keeping the strongest winds and wettest conditions over the southern areas with uh, not too bad of a day tomorrow up along the central and northern uh, southeast coast. A few showers lingering here, one band of moisture lifting northward there, uh, but really dissipating. So just some variable cloudiness and some isolated showers possible from Cordova, possibly Valdez onto the northeast there into the Yukon. This will be lifting northward, so you'll see the lowest flying conditions during the morning hours there, especially for the passes, and then they should go VFR by the afternoon. Over the interior, uh, variably cloudy, areas of light snow or snow showers, uh, especially along the Alaska Range, all the way around right down uh, into the Aleutian Range. This area persisting through tomorrow along the Alaska Peninsula with, uh, again, diminishing but holding stationary here, an area of moisture right up the uh, southwest coast of the Bering Strait. And then a lot of clouds, areas of light snow, fog up here over the northwest. Uh, but that all beginning to slide off to the west a little bit, so may see some clearing coming in behind over the Brooks Range late tomorrow afternoon. 
and then uh, that northeast uh, wind will keep those surges of moisture in the form of flurries and low clouds coming onto the eastern Arctic coast. But we'll see this front uh, coming eastward here, so look for the winds to switch around to the west-northwest, 15 to 25 miles an hour or knots out over the western Aleutians, and uh, maybe some small craft advisories ahead of this weakening front here. All of the moisture looks like it'll stay to the west of the Pribilofs and west of the eastern Aleutians. Uh, light winds now for the False Pass Cold Bay areas, and by tomorrow afternoon, 15 to 25 miles an hour to the north-northwest here, southwest of Kodiak Island. And then on Wednesday, that front uh, continues to weaken, just about stalls out here over the eastern Aleutians, and then uh, doesn't quite make it to the Pribilofs, but close enough uh, to say there's a chance of some moisture, especially for St. George. A much stronger system pushes into the western Aleutians, uh, probably bringing some gale force winds in Tuesday night, and uh, then during the day on Wednesday, that'll lift north of the area, winds will diminish, and then the gales will push eastward here toward the central areas. Uh, much lighter winds over the Fox Islands, though, uh, kind of a ridge of high pressure here, and this low becoming very weak as it moves eastward. Over the interior, uh, lots of uh, sunshine, still an area of moisture out here, but that's going to be mostly along and off the coast with a very weak northeast breeze there, so sunny skies from Bristol Bay and even the Alaska Peninsula. Kodiak Island as well, I probably have too many clouds in there so it'll be dry nonetheless, but lots of sunshine here from the North Gulf Coast all the way up to uh, maybe the North Slope and then you su still have these surges of moisture in that east-northeast wind flow, but uh, not looking too bad here, better conditions over the western Arctic coast down in towards uh, Kivalina and Kotzebue with that massive light snow pushing off to the west. And then still have this low here, uh, a little weaker and still west of the Queen Charlotte though, so possibly could see uh, some gale force winds, more likely small craft advisories down along the south coast, occasional rain, and uh, some of that moisture could slide all the way up to Haines and possibly Skagway, but I cut it off at this point. Uh, with showers over the northern areas dry here along the North Gulf Coast, and these showers will stay off the coast there and to the east of Kodiak Island or to the south of uh, Resurrection Bay. For temperatures uh, this afternoon, there we go, mostly in the mid 40s to uh, lower 50s over the southeast coast, that's uh, 52 at Cloak, 56 up at Skagway, 50 degrees in Juneau. Cordova reported 52 this afternoon, while Homer had 53. Upper 40s for the remainder of Cook Inlet, right up into the uh, Susitna Valley. About the same in uh, the Copper River Valley locations, Gulcana, 42 degrees, uh, 31 at Delta, and 32 at Fairbanks, 30 degrees at Fort Yukon. And uh, here over the southwest part of the state, anywhere from uh, upper 30s to lower 40s, mid 40s here over the Pribilofs. Uh, 39 cold bay with uh, all the winds there, so keeping it in the upper 30s, but Kodiak pushed up to 47. And about uh, the same here over the central and western Aleutians, mid 40s, dropping back to the mid 30s up around St. Lawrence Island. Up over the uh, Arctic coast, temperatures mostly in the lower to mid 20s, although uh, Kaktovik up to 27. 28 there at Kivalina, 30 at Shishmaref, with uh, Buckland up to 31, Ambler at 34, and kind of lower 30s here on the plus side of freezing over the interior, and then down the valleys, mid to uh, high 30s. And for the lows tonight, uh, 0 to 10 here in the area over the Brooks Range in the north slope that clears out, otherwise teens for the remainder of the Arctic coast, uh, 20s down across the Seward Peninsula with mid-20s over the southwest interior and much milder out over the Aleutians, but uh, dropping down in the mid-20s there for areas of Bristol Bay, 37 for Kodiak, lower 30s south central Alaska, 20s along and north of the Brooks Range into the Tanana Valley, then back down into the teens for the Yukon, lows tonight for the Pandandle in the lower 40s. And for that area tomorrow, look for uh, 50s on the lower 50s there, could push up to 55 down toward Klawak and Heidelberg, but uh, Copper River Basin, lower to mid 30s, Tanana Valley, lower 30s, 
and upper 20s for the Yukon area. Fort Yukon high 27 forecast tomorrow. Anatovic 17 and about the same there. Mid to upper 20s for the Arctic coast and uh, upper 20s though down across Kotzebue Sound with uh, Nome right around the freeze point for your high temperature tomorrow and then back up to near 40 there along the southwest coast and in the 40s near 50 over the Aleutians. And for flying weather, uh, again VFR here over the southern areas, lingering marginal VFR could start out IFR here along the entire stretch of the Alaska Range on the north and western approaches. Area marginal VFR holding in areas here on the west side of the mountains, extending back to the northwest where that persistent area of snow will be occurring tonight and tomorrow. And then again on Wednesday, that'll be pulling off to the west, uh, but IFR along the eastern Arctic coast down over the west central north slope. And again, improving back to the west there from east to west, uh, conditions becoming VFR. And mostly the southern southeast coast, marginal VFR, good VFR and up to the north. And then with that next front pushing eastward, uh, quite an area here of IFR. Uh, it may not be this solid, but definitely here coming into the central Aleutians and extending back to the northwest with VFR over the uh, eastern Aleutians here and a little bit of marginal VFR persisting. So all of that leftover moisture there on the north side of the peninsula. For passes, Anatovic, lowest conditions on the northern approach, uh, marginal through the pass and then VFR on down to the south. Same forecast for Adigan, that same pattern, lowest conditions on the north side, possibly IFR. Lake Clark and Merrill, uh, marginal VFR at times again, that would be mostly on the western entrances, definitely VFR through the pass into the east. And for rainy, could start out marginal here even through the pass, but uh, the east side will be VFR and marginal conditions may hold through most of the day tomorrow on that western entrance. For windy, lowest on the north side, occasionally marginal VFR, could go VFR at times. And for Isabel, lowest north side, marginal through the pass and then becoming VFR in the afternoon. And for Mentasta, occasionally marginal with the lowest conditions on that northern entrance, probably VFR on the southern entrance. And for Tanita, both approaches VFR and Portage, VFR tomorrow. Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR. Again, that band of moisture will be lifting northward, so it should go VFR by the late morning hours and continue through the afternoon. For the uh, freezing levels, uh, Upper low sliding southeastward, so a little bit of a southeast wind pulling a little bit milder air, holding it here in the Gulf of Alaska, and a little bit up into the interior there, 2,000 feet tomorrow morning, lining up just about with the Alaska Range, more or less, and then dropping down into Bristol Bay with a surface uh, right along the coast to St. Lawrence Island, and then the uh, storminess out here to the west, trying to nudge some warmer air up, but really not uh, having much success at that, but 2,000 feet coming back to the north there, up toward uh, St. Matthew Island. And for the icing, not a whole lot. There'll be some areas of icing here, mostly over the northwest there, uh, of the uh, mixed or rhyme varieties tomorrow, possibly extending a little bit farther to the south. And then some slight chances here over the eastern Alaska range and uh, with that weakening band coming northward here, a narrow area in that location, but uh, above four to 5,000 feet uh, with that low off the coast there, that'll be the most likely area of any icing at all. And also back out with that front pushing eastward into the central Aleutians and extending back to the northwest. Upper level wind flow chart shows a pretty good jet that will be driving that front eastward. Uh, High pressure edging its way e uh, to the east here, so this northwest jet weakening, but still at about 70 knots uh, tomorrow, and that'll continue to push eastward. A series of impulses coming uh, across the Bering Sea from the west. That's going to be knocking this ridge down and weakening it over the next several days and through the week, uh, but um, should keep the storminess. We'll stay mostly to the south here with the jet. To the south here, this trough right off the southeast coast there, keeping the jet to the over the uh, southern areas and then maybe toward the end of the week that'll redevelop and we'll see that south north flow coming back into the southeast coast. Otherwise uh, just kind of an upper level trough here over the interior with weak flow and at 3,000 feet we're still looking at a very narrow area northwest winds 20 to 30 knots here along the coast across the Alaska Peninsula and then down onto the southeast storminess here off the southeast coast. Uh, 
keeping it windiest there across Prince of Wales Island and much lighter winds up to the north. Just five to 10 knot winds here over the southeast interior. And then a, a kind of a narrow area, 20 knot winds. It's uh, appears stronger at 3,000 feet. Could be up to 35 knots there. Had some uh, wind gusts up to about 25 miles an hour earlier today, Indian Mountain, for example. So it could be some breezy areas again tomorrow. And uh, Arctic coast, not too bad, 3,000 feet, 15 to 20, maybe 25 knots, but uh, 25 to 30 knot winds. Again, pretty narrow here. It drops off markedly as you get to Nunavak Island and to the west out under this ridge axis, just 5 to 10 knots there. And then right out of the south on the other side of the high west, southwest behind the front, and then subtly at about 25 knots with the strongest winds back toward Russia or down to the south of the Aleutians. Turbulence uh, looking like this, uh, occasional moderate chop here southwest of Kodiak Island and up the west coast and a little bit off the southeast coast. Uh, sea ice slowly increasing, especially along the coastal areas. And for the marine forecasts, uh, gales dropping back to small craft advisories tomorrow and then uh, still a threat of some gales here on the south coast but lighter winds up to the north. For south central Alaska, northeasterlies 15 to 25 from the northwest and then lighter winds in store for Wednesday. For the, Alu or for the Bristol Bay, northeast 15, diminishing southwest of Kodiak Island, and then down to 15 in that area, lighter winds for the peninsula. For the Aleutians, northwest 15, the front coming through and weakening, but still some small craft advisories possible. And then that next storm, the gales will come in Tuesday night and lift northward and approach the wet central Aleutians late in the day for the southwest coast, 15 to 20 knot winds and lighter on Wednesday. Arctic coast, northeast, all areas 20 to 30 knots both days. And uh, these forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan.